Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are going to teach you how to grow your overall profits very aggressively. In this video, we're going to be going over both the general rules to investing as well as the technical side of investing so you know what I am doing step by step, which has grown my portfolio in the last two years to around $60,000. In 2020, I started this particular portfolio at just $1,000, and we actually grew this all the way to around $30,000 originally. However, with that being said, each year, my goal is to increase this overall portfolio by $25,000, and we have literally done that. When I started to record this series, we started with around $50,000, it went to $54,000, and now we are at around $60,000 in approximately a two-year time frame, where we have gained $59,461.71. So now I'm going to be going over the step-by-step -step technicals of what I have been doing to grow my portfolio so aggressively. And this mainly all comes down to the various risk management policies that I have in place and the way in which I invest. So we're first going to go over the general guide to investing. And I actually like to use Dave Ramsey's baby steps as a very good platform to talk about what we need to do. If you're not familiar with Dave Ramsey, he will teach you the safest way that you can build wealth. And although I disagree with him on some things, I think he has created a phenomenal formula that literally will work for everyone. However, wealth and riches will be defined differently depending on how much you're willing to allocate to his various steps. So he is very well known for his infamous baby steps to where it goes through steps one to seven. The first baby step is to save $1,000 for your emergency fund. So this is money that you will need on short notice. So first you're going to have to build an emergency fund. His baby step two is to pay off all debt. Baby step three is to then grow that $1,000 emergency fund to three to six months worth of expenses. So you can fully pay them if you're completely out of a job. Baby step four is to invest around 15% of your income in your retirement accounts. Baby step five is to save for your children's college fund. Baby step six is to pay off your home. And then finally, baby step seven is to be extremely generous with your newfound wealth. So as we go through these very functional baby steps of very general rules of investing in our next segment, we will be going over the technical side of investing and what I personally do. So so we're going to start off with baby step one, which is to make a starter emergency fund. The first thing you want to do, Dave says, is to save $1,000 in your savings account as quickly as possible without going into debt. Before this, I think there should be a sooner step, and that is to make an overall budget. Make sure you know how much money you're taking in and how much is going out. You want to lower your overall expenses and then take that margin and put it into a savings account until you reach $1,000. So step one, in my view, would be to understand how much money you're bringing in by creating a spreadsheet or a budget and how much you're spending on eating out various subscriptions and things that you don't honestly need. Because this savings that you're going to have is then going to be transferred over into your savings account until you reach $1,000. Baby step two, Dave says, is to pay off all debt except the house. And he likes using the debt snowball method, which is psychological extremely effective. In the same way, having a $1,000 emergency fund, again, gets your mind in the psychology of saving money. And paying off all debt using the snowball method is also another psychologically advantageous way to pay off debt. Essentially, the snowball method is when you write down all of your debts from the balance with your least amount of debt to the balance with the largest amount of debt. So for instance, if I'm carrying a credit card bill with $500 on it, and then then I have a student loan with $60,000 on it, clearly, according to the debt snowball, I'm going to pay off the lowest balance first, which is going to be the $500 in credit card debt, and then I'm going to move on to that $60,000 worth of debt for the student loan. And he says that you should do this regardless of interest rate. So you're going to pay the minimum payments on all other forms of debt, but really focus any other cash you have available on the lowest outstanding balance. Now, of course, my caveat would be mathematically, you would want to pay off the debt with the highest interest rate. So I like to use the debt avalanche, which is you're going to order all of your debts in terms of the highest 
highest interest rate, and you want to pay off the highest interest rate debt first while making minimum payments on all other forms of debt besides your home. So again, you could do either one. Step three would be to save three to six months worth of expenses. So now you're going to take that $1,000 emergency fund and after you pay off all of your debt, you're going to start saving for your larger emergency fund. And the way you calculate this is you're going to multiply your monthly expenses by three or six and then whatever that total is, that's how much you want in a savings account. Now, I personally like to do all of these baby steps simultaneously because again, according to mathematics, that is going to lead me to wealth the quickest way. However, psychologically, it's going to be hard to stick with this certain regimen unless you do exactly what Dave says because again, Dave keeps the person's psychology in mind while making these baby steps and he has done a genius job doing this and I also appreciate his safety in these things. These baby steps are a very safe way to create wealth over the long term so I highly respect him doing that. And this makes achieving riches and wealth very achievable for everyday consumers who are not disciplined enough to do this. Also, Dave does not like credit cards. After you pay off your credit cards, he says to just shred them and get rid of them. I myself like credit cards because I think they can be used responsibly, but for the majority of people, I would agree with Dave. You're better off just shredding them if you're in the Baby Steps program because the whole reason that you need the Baby Steps is that you're not already rich, which means you're not responsible with money. I like doing step three, which is saving for an emergency fund at the same time as I'm doing step four, and that is to invest around 15% of your income in retirement. And we'll talk about what that is when we go to our technical segment about where this money should be invested. But as a general rule, you would want to save between 15 to 25 percent of your income in retirement. And I'm going to do this while I am doing the other steps. However, Dave says that you should do these steps one at a time. And I can agree with him on that. Yes, it will work if you do them one at a time. And it is very psychologically rewarding to do them one at a time. So you can have a checklist because it shows that you're making progress. However, for mine, you're not going to be able to see your progress very well, but trust me, you're doing a lot of good. So baby step four would be once you pay off the debt besides your house and you have money in the bank, that can pay off three to six months worth of expenses if you were ever laid off, then you would invest 15 to 25% of your household income into your retirement. The next step would be to save for your children's college fund. Essentially, you would want to go into a 529 college savings program and you would want to invest around four to $5,000 in a lump sum payment originally as soon as your child is born and then from that point onward, don't add another dime to it because by the time they're 18 that would have compounded enough to completely pay off their overall tuition once they turn 18 and we will get into the technicals of what you should invest into and what you should put into your 529 plan later in this video we're just going over the general fundamentals of investing right now baby step six is to pay off your home early and this is going to be the thing that probably takes the longest your mortgage is the only thing standing between you and a complete freedom mindset from all of your debt. And once you pay off your home, you're going to be able to build wealth extremely efficiently and quickly. However, again, I like to do baby steps one through six all at the exact same time because mathematically it works out. However, psychologically it could be discouraging, which is exactly why Dave Ramsey developed these in a certain order. Because he thinks once you pay off your house, the remainder margin of that money can go straight into investing, literally invest everything that you're not using on your expenses and you will be able to build wealth extremely quickly and efficiently. Lastly, once you're rich and wealthy, you can now be extremely generous to causes that you like, such as donating to charity, your local church, helping the community, or helping the poor. This is a great way and I love how Dave adds this to his overall baby steps. So in summary, if you want to follow Dave Ramsey, I would highly recommend you do that. He has developed an ingenious formula that will literally work for anyone. So kudos to him. Now we're going to jump into the actual technicals about what you need to do to properly perform these fundamental and foundational baby steps. So this is where we're going to go into more of my strategy. So we're going to say getting started before you invest into your retirement accounts. And again, that's what you should start with. You should start with an IRA or a 401k or 
preferably both simultaneously, and you need to understand your overall risk tolerance. Younger people can take on more risk than older people, however, that is not an excuse to be frivolous with your overall money and just decide to invest into risky penny stocks. That is absolutely a waste of money, you might as well burn it for warmth. Stocks are categorized in different ways and they're really reflecting on their risk that they hold. For instance, there are large cap companies and large cap stocks, which refers to their overall market capitalization of how much this business is worth according to their share price and their outstanding shares. Then you have small cap companies, which are more risky because these are up and coming companies that could potentially go out of business, with the potential of larger cap companies going out of business is substantially lower than a small cap company. You also have aggressive growth stocks, which I would put more into penny stocks and small cap companies. And then you have value stocks. These companies are trading at a good value. They most likely offer a very consistent dividend and they have strong earnings. And these all have different levels of risk. Large cap and value stocks are the ones that I really like to focus on because they have low risk. Now there are other companies that are more aggressive and small cap and technology companies that say that they offer investors a large amount of upside, but clearly you're taking on risk. And I like to minimize my risk to where if I do invest into one of these aggressive growth companies, I like to only have around a 45% allocation to these companies because I like to focus more on large cap companies and value stocks. So for some large cap companies, I would do Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Berkshire Hathaway. And those are the ticker symbols on screen for those. So now that you understand your risk tolerance and that you really should kind of avoid risky single technology aggressive growth stocks and or penny stocks, you need to invest into a particular investment vehicle. So you want to open a brokerage account. I would suggest three brokerages that are very good for your retirement accounts. And that would be Charles Schwab, Fidelity, as well as Vanguard. All three of these brokers are very, very prestigious and very safe. I also want to make sure that once you open an IRA and or a 401k, preferably both, that you are not trading stocks in these. These are retirement accounts. You are not supposed to go in and trade companies such as buying and selling companies. The companies you buy, you are going to hold for the rest of your life. You are not going to liquidate these companies. So you better make sure that these are very well-known, prestigious companies that you are adding to your portfolio because your retirement is on the line. You are not going to buy and sell these companies. These are companies you are supposed to keep forever. And that is going to reflect our investment goal. I am personally a long-term term investor. So the companies I buy, I am most likely never going to sell. If you're older, you want to generate as much income and be as safe as possible. However, for me personally, I am not a big fan of investing into bonds. I would much rather invest into prestigious large cap value single stocks, or my personal favorite is investing into ETFs, which are exchange traded funds, such as ticker symbol QQQ, M-T-U-M, S-C-H-D, and V-O-O. -O. These are the ticker symbols and ETFs that I invest into every single two weeks, and they have made me gain around $60,000 in just two years, as you saw earlier. Some of these also reflect index funds as well as mutual funds. So if you can find safe, diversified, well-performing ETFs, index funds, and mutual funds, 80% of my portfolio, at least the portfolio I showed because I have around five portfolios, the vast majority of my portfolio is made up of ETFs, index funds, and mutual funds. And hopefully, remember, keep this in mind, you don't want to have these funds overlap. You want to make sure that these funds are holding various different companies and sectors. A thing that I would discourage you from doing is get a robo-advisor or an automated robo-advisor. Now, you do want your overall investing to be automated, such as investing, I don't know, anywhere from $25 to $2,000 into an actual investment, not just into your brokerage account. You actually have to invest that money and hopefully you automate that to invest into ETFs such as the ones that I said earlier or a high-performing indexed fund such as VFIX or VT Sachs as well as mutual funds funds. So now this begs the question, once you have your investing style, you understand your risk, you know what you're investing into, which should probably be these, what should you focus on? Maxing out your IRA or your 401k? Well, if your 401k has an employer match, you instantly want to do your 401k first because you are literally getting paid to hold money in your 401k. It's essentially free money. Once you have maxed out the percentage, for instance, if your employer matches a 4% allocation to your 401k, you would want 
want to initially invest 4% into your 401k, and then you would want to focus on your IRA, which could be consisted of those mutual funds, ETFs, or index funds that we talked about earlier. And again, you are not trading these. You are investing into these and dollar cost averaging by automating your investments into these every single two weeks, essentially every paycheck. Once you enroll into a plan like this, you want to focus on the type of IRA that you have. If you are young, you want your IRA most likely to be a Roth IRA. So essentially you get taxed up front, but when you take this money out later, when it's worth millions more, you don't get taxed. And a good rule of thumb for this, if you're not going to do it by age, is if you plan to make more money in your retirement than you are right now, then you should do a Roth. Now, if you're not going to make more money in retirement than you are right now, you would want to do a traditional IRA. The next step is once you have an IRA and you invested into those various ETFs that you went over, that is going to instantly diversify you and thus reduce your risk. We are anti-risk here because we are long-term investors. At least me personally, I am a long-term investor and I do not like taking on unnecessary risk. This is why diversification throughout every sector in the stock market is very important. Because by diversifying your overall assets that you hold in your IRA and 401k, you are reducing the risk of any losses. And that means you're going to have a better overall returns over a long period of time. And that is going to make you grow your overall portfolio very aggressively. And like we said earlier, mutual funds and ETFs as well as index funds are going to be great at doing this by giving you instant diversification. You also want to make sure that your brokerage account can offer fractional shares or share slices. That's why I really like Fidelity, because these brokerages allow you to invest into shares that you otherwise probably wouldn't be able to afford. For instance, let's pretend a stock is trading at $125 per share. With share slices or fractional shares, you can invest as little as $1 or $25 into that company without buying a full share. However, if you signed up with Fidelity, that is not going to be a problem for you. Another thing you want to pay attention to is the mutual fund loads or an ETF expense ratio, or like we like to call them a management expense ratio for mutual funds. And essentially, this is a fee that the provider of this fund or the manager gets paid. I personally don't like actively managed funds. These funds have no evidence that they outperform passive funds. And normally the expense ratio on these funds are rather high, which range anywhere between 0.05% to 2% annually for a regular fund and then for actively managed funds, those things can go as high as like 5%, which is absolutely insane. A good rule of thumb is you would want nothing above 2%. Clearly, the lower the better because you don't want them taking your money even to get access to various investments. So be careful when you're comparing mutual funds and ETFs to compare their expense ratio, their costs, as well as the management expense ratio. However, the ones I said earlier are all very good in terms of their expense ratios because those are the ones that I personally am invested into. Again, we don't want robo-advisors because you're only going to be invested into a handful of investments literally your entire life. For me, I like to invest as much as I possibly can regarding money that I don't need in the next five years. So if I'm not going to use this money and I'm just going to blow it on shoes or clothes or a car, I would much rather invest that money so my money is making me money instead of buying assets or things or rather liabilities that aren't making me money and they're taking money from me. So I hope this video was helpful giving you more of a technical view as well as a foundational general fundamental view of how I invest and how other very successful investors such as Dave Ramsey invest. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them down below. Remember to go and smash that like button for more videos just like this one, and I will see you in the next YT video.